Oh, you never know. Now, in these days of economic doom and gloom, we'd all like some help with our household expenses. Later this afternoon, the DUP will call on its minister, Nigel Dodds, to ensure that every possible step is taken to reduce pressure on the bills of householders. But with his budget already under pressure, is there anything the finance minister can do? Nigel Dodds joins me now. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, so, uh, is there anything you can do? I mean, is it the job of uh, the executive to help out with household bills? Well, I think we're doing a considerable amount already, and this motion gives us the opportunity to pinpoint and highlight that. Uh, for instance, you know, in household bills, uh, the water bills would be through the door if it were not for devolution, and we have deferred that, and we had a very successful negotiation with Treasury to ensure that the non-cash costs of that wouldn't have to be met out of other uh, expenditure in Northern Ireland, which was worth about £800 million pounds, uh, per year to Northern Ireland. Uh, and in terms of the rates, for instance, again, money that would come out of people's pockets, uh, that's been frozen at a regional rates level. Uh, and business rates have also been frozen, which impacts on people's jobs and therefore uh, job prospects and so on. So, yes, there are things that we can do and are doing, and that's... Uh, not taking account, of course, of the fuel credit, which is going to be paid to 150,000 people, particularly pensioners and those in income support and so on, uh, and other measures that have been taken as well to help people. So it's, a, it's, it's, it's trying to find the balance between raising necessary expenditure and at the same time trying to bring, bring some relief to people at these very difficult, challenging economic times. And when you uh, listen to some of the economists, there seems to be a bit of a consensus emerging that you've got the balance wrong in terms of perhaps favouring the householders more than the economy in general. Uh, because you've done things like uh, deferred water charging, because you've frozen the rates, uh, you are starving yourself of money that you could spend in other areas. Well, I've heard that, and that's why, of course, that uh, I think they're wrong in that, actually, because what we're trying to do is actually help people and business. Uh, and, you know, if we had not responded in relation to business in particular, for instance, freezing the manufacturing rates at 30% under direct rule, it would have been 100%, and doing the things we have done for business... And including the introduction next year of a small business rates relief scheme, people have been rightly critical and said, well, what's the point of having devolution? You're just carrying on the policies of direct rule. You're not helping businesses. Uh, and of course, we've got to try and help. But at the same time, recognising that we still have to bring in the money and, and raise expenditure, we haven't gone as far as many people would like us to have done or what I would like to personally have done because we've got to be cognisant of the fact we still need to raise revenue. So, for instance, therefore, we can't just reduce rates what we've done is frozen them which is a considerable improvement but of course you could do much more if you were just sort of ignorant or, or not taking account of the state of the finances and we've got to take that into account like what we've done now is reach a sensible reasonable balance and all of that is there a sense that we still need uh, ministers to be a bit more sort of bluntly honest with the public out there i think brian can south of the border was was telling his public they might face of fall in living standards of something like 10 percent in the course of the next well, year and we're expecting a hair shirt budget in in dublin i mean presumably we can't avoid all of these realities because it's an international well, this, this situation is great, this is the great difference you see northern ireland is part of the united kingdom and the irish republic on its own is part of the eurozone mm -hmm. and because it's in the eurozone and part of the euro it's it can't devalue its currency as sterling has done therefore it's having to introduce swinging cuts and and deal with a whole range of issues in a very draconian manner as part of the United Kingdom, this is a great argument for being part of a big economy and being part of the United Kingdom. Northern Ireland has, had, has avoided that. As a result of not being in the euro, we haven't had to go down the road of avoiding devaluation of the currency and not being tied to European Central Bank interest rates. So again, another advantage of not being in the euro. So being part of the United Kingdom, not being part of the euro, means that the UK generally is in a position to take different steps to deal with the economic recession. And Northern Ireland, because we are getting the block grant, because we have that money uh, coming to us, uh, it means that we, we know what's coming over the, over the three-year period. Now, I have been bluntly honest about saying to people, here are the Treasury now coming along sort of halfway through that settlement and trying to take some of it back from us, and that's the battle that we are fighting. But in terms of the uh, overall uh, money that's coming to Northern Ireland in the financial year just about to start on Wednesday, 1st of April, there hasn't been any reduction in the block grant, so therefore we don't have to do the things that are being done on the side. But all the predictions are that, say, on the other side of the next general election, we will face cuts in public services and tax hikes because of the massive public spending that's being engaged uh, in right now. I've signalled already that the Treasury are already indicating that they want to take £5 billion in so-called efficiencies out of Whitehall departments and the devolved governments. That would mean about £140 million in 2010-11 for Northern Ireland. 
Uh, and, I've, and, and we know that the Conservatives want to go even further than that, so it's a very difficult public expenditure position. But uh, we have arguments that we are putting up to Treasury in relation to that, and we'll continue to fight that battle. Okay. Nigel Dodds, many thanks. Indeed.